again live here in Studio B. And if Shakespeare was right and all the world's a stage, what part do we play? Discover the answer in part one of Desire, the stage manager of life. Plus, we'll have the latest on the migrant crisis in Europe, and Brian Bush joins me with the latest news on the situation in Israel. The Harvest Show begins right now. Hello and welcome to The Harvest Show. Glad you could be here. We've got Building 429 in the house in Studio B today. Can't wait for that. But we've got a lot more coming up too. So I uh, just want to get started today. A lot of things to talk about, but just to mention to our, our friends watching that uh, this is kind of an interesting week, a mm -hmm. special week each year. Rolls around right yep. around this mm -hmm. time with our managers from, uh, from down in New Orleans, WHNO, mm -hmm. and down in Indianapolis, Tulsa, mm -hmm. Denver, Hawaii, even... Yep. even even uh, uh, Chris from the U.S. Virgin Islands right. and, and uh, uh, Jerome from Henderson coming mm -hmm. in for managers meeting for Lassie right. Broadcasting. What's the, the things you've been discussing this week? It's been an interesting week, as usual, where we have all of our managers together for an annual meeting, talking about budgets, talking about what we've been doing and how we can do a lot of things better. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of it boils around budget and finances. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of interesting. I, I had to leave the meeting to come down and be on the program this morning. and. Uh, Lori uh, Kaufman, who's in charge of our shortwave ministry, uh, was talking about how this year is the 30th anniversary of uh, International Shortwave for wow. the ministry. And, uh, uh, you know, you kind of good to think about some of the things where we've been and how we can improve and what we can do better and programming and that sort of thing. So it's, it's overall been good. Yeah, I enjoy seeing the guys too. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've got invitations to do uh, live shows from the U.S. Virgin Islands. And, yes. And in uh, February and uh, Hawaii in January, I think we can we can beat the winter uh -huh. this year. <laughs> yes, and, and I want the record to state that I was invited to do those shows on location there. So I really? just yes, yeah, so we're throwing. Seen, I hadn't seen that memo. <laughs> okay, well here you go. <laughs> so it was just really interesting to meet some of the managers and to find out that shortwave has been around for 30 years. Did you 30 ever years. think you would? I mean, people call it old school technology, but it seems to keep on working. When I left the meeting, Lori was uh, actually reading a quote from uh, the gentleman who used to be in charge of the international shortwave uh, work for the mm -hmm. British Broadcasting Corporation, the government of, of, of uh, the United Kingdom. And he said, if shortwave uh, was discovered today instead of eight decades ago, it would be called a modern technology miracle to be able to reach the world, world. from a single point. Mm -hmm. And that, that really is incredible that uh, today mm -hmm. from two different locations, one in the South Pacific and one from uh, South Carolina, we're able to actually cover the entire world with the gospel. Wow. So when you think of that and you think of the impact, say, in mm -hmm. a place called in North Korea, right. you know, we That's would right. never be able to go there. Well, I'll never say never because we don't know what the Lord will do, but shortwave can very, go when we cannot go. It's very challenging as well as other, other places around the mm -hmm. world. And, uh, I was just reading a report today about uh, discrimination, religious discrimination around yes. the world, and it really is very challenging. The number of countries that really are cracking down uh, on, on especially Christianity, but a lot of other religions as well. Yeah, interesting uh, headline today out of uh, Christian Post from John Kerry, religious persecution exists even in the U.S., Kerry admits during a rollout of the International Religious Freedom Report, and uh, this is a report apparently that comes out every year, has done so for the last 17 years, uh, chronicling religious freedom across the world and religious persecution across the world. And uh, as we would expect, the Middle East is a, uh, there's a big issue there, especially with the rise of uh, ISIS and uh, I guess fundamentalism, Islamic fundamentalism in the wake of uh, dictators being deposed. One of the things that surprised me from this report, too, is that Boko Haram, which, if you remember, was the, the Bring Back Our Girls campaign, mm -hmm. the 200 girls that were kidnapped uh, well over a year ago, uh, they have not uh, quieted down. In fact, they've actually gotten worse, spreading from Nigeria uh, to other neighboring nations, including uh, Cameroon. Uh, and uh, over 9,000 people uh, have lost their lives uh, because of religious persecution uh, at the hands of Boko Haram in that uh, north 
southwestern uh, part of Africa. But uh, it seems like the issue of martyrdom and uh, mm -hmm. persecution for faith, and some is Muslim and some is Christian as well, uh, is not uh, waning by any means. We, we got an email yesterday uh, from a gentleman who was watching the program, and he said, what are you doing to combat the persecution of Christians? And uh, we responded back, we've got shortwave radio, we've got Middle East television, we're distributing Bibles around the world, we're helping refugees as much as we can yeah, in Europe food, that are yeah. moving in. Then I was reading an article this morning, and uh, our government, uh, mm -hmm. to try and step up making sure what's going on, and uh, they've uh, instituted a new fleet of drones to be based in the uh, African nation of Cameroon to keep an eye on Boko Haram. Yeah. yeah. That's all we're going <laughs> to do. We're going to keep an eye on them. Uh, that's, that's not much. Right, right, yeah. Uh, another interesting quote from uh, uh, Archbishop from Syria, and uh, I had heard something along these lines with regards to Iraq, but with regards to what's happening in in Syria, uh, the Archbishop is kind of complimenting the Russians for stepping in and doing something that's going to be uh, having effect on the ground. But uh, his, his quote and his perspective was, we've never had problems with the Assad regime as Christians. All the minorities used to live very well. And I heard the same thing about Iraq prior yeah. to Saddam's mm -hmm. ouster, that there was a thriving uh, Christian community and even and because it was a secular nation, even though it was Muslim. Mm -hmm. they, an annual Christian booksellers convention mm -hmm. in Baghdad every year that was uh, well attended mm -hmm. by uh, well over 20,000 people. Uh, but in the wake or the vacuum of this Arab Spring, we've seen uh, uh, the tables turned and unfortunately, uh, Several reports have come out where, uh, in Iraq, for example, uh, they, they're wondering if there are going to be any Christians left within the next four, four or five years. Stefan, that's very interesting. You, you, you mentioned that and bring that up because uh, across the Middle East and a lot of places, Gaddafi was admittedly a bad guy. Right. Assad's a bad guy. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Mubarak was not the best guy, you know, on, on earth. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and, and you go down the list of, of dictators throughout the Middle East who were not good people. But at the same time, they allowed minorities to flourish and exist. Mm -hmm. uh, we saw an article just the other day regarding Yemen where a, a community of 50,000 Jews who used to live in Yemen are now down to a couple of hundred. Mm. A hundred uh, wow. in, in the capital, mm -hmm. another hundred in another city. And they've been told, convert or leave. Mm -hmm. One or the other. You've got only two choices. Mm -hmm. Get out of town or convert. One or the other to Islam. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, you go back to... They were ruled by dictators, they were ruled by bad guys, but unfortunately, that's one of the conundrums of life that these bad guys, frankly, allowed Christianity or other religions, you know, mm -hmm. to exist, and he just ruled with an iron thumb, and it, it's, it's a strange thing. Yeah, sometimes I guess it's better the devil you know than the one you mm -hmm. don't. Mm -hmm. uh, lots of times we look at these situations, we, say, we see these dictators, and we say, uh, their ruthlessness and and uh, and as Pete mentioned, it's not that they're they're good dictators. Mm -hmm. I mean, right. there's obviously ruthlessness there that you want to stop. But if you don't go in with a plan mm -hmm. of how things are going to succeed right. afterwards, as we've seen time and time again, you open yourself up to the situation we have now. Mm -hmm. So, Pete, were you surprised when you didn't hear a lot of this talk going on, at, you know, during the Democratic debate? with the candidates, because I didn't hear much about the Middle East, if anything. Huh, what did they talk about? <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't recall. Oh, yeah, email. They mentioned email a couple yeah, of times. Yeah, they did mention With email. some four-letter words. But, uh, uh, you know, it, it, again, people are not dealing with substance that they should. Right. And it's unfortunate. Okay. Yeah. It kind of goes to the importance of politics. And we've got a man on the street report that we're going to potentially get to a little bit later because we're going to move on now, but we'd love to hear your thoughts as well. Share your questions and comments on Facebook, Twitter, and uh, remember to uh, take a moment and pray today for our brothers and sisters in Christ who are being persecuted for their faith and living in a very, very difficult situations and environments. The international news is next here on The Harvest Show.
And now on this October 15, 2015, here's what's happening in your world. Israeli soldiers were deployed to an East Jerusalem neighborhood today trying to counter a wave of deadly Palestinian shooting and stabbing attacks that have created panic. Israeli police deployed 300 soldiers in cities across Israel, joining some 4,000 police officers already patrolling the streets and bus routes of Jerusalem. I live in a neighborhood that we have Palestinians and Jews as well. We live in peace. But when somebody take a knife and kill Jews, what are we supposed to do? What are we supposed to do? The violence erupted a month ago over the Jewish New Year, fueled by rumors that Israel was plotting to take over Jerusalem's most sensitive holy site, a hilltop compound revered by Jews as the Temple Mount and home to the Al-Aqsa Mosque, Islam's third holiest shrine. Palestinians say the violence coming at a time when prospects for gaining the independence appear slim is the result of years of occupation and failed peace efforts. Thousands of refugees and migrants living in the camp known as the Jungle near the French port of Calais claim basic rights and sympathy are in short supply. The travelers, many fleeing wars in the Middle East, live in what may be the European Union's biggest and most squalid ghetto. They dream of ending their long journey in Britain by illegally crossing the English Channel, but Britain doesn't want them, and France has been hoping for more than a decade the migrants would just stop coming. With the world's eyes on the more than half million migrants and refugees flooding into Europe this year, France is finally beginning to take notice of the filthy Calais camp and the plight of those forced to bide their time in what they call the jungle. It's a network of makeshift shelters, most of them without the most basic amenities. Toilets, that's absolutely pathetic. Nobody is going to the toilet. Everybody is just going to the jungle for the urine or for the stuff like that. Nobody is going in here. The charity doctors of the world treat some 70 patients a day at the Calais camp, mainly for illnesses like respiratory and skin infections linked to their precarious lives or cuts and fractures from their failed bids to board a truck or train. And the stream of refugees shows no signs of stopping. Migrants and refugees have been continuing to arrive on the Greek island of Lesbos. Footage from UK Sky News shows a dinghy full of people arriving on the island shores with another visible in the sea in the distance. It comes as European leaders hold a summit today discussing how to tackle the migration crisis. Let's hope that goes more smoothly than today's parliament session in Kosovo. Opposition lawmakers used tear gas to disrupt the session for the second time in the last two weeks, protesting an EU-sponsored deal with Serbia that gives the country's Serb majority areas greater powers. Now, the opposition has pledged to not allow Parliament to hold a session unless the government backtracks from this deal, saying it endangers Kosovo's territorial integrity. The governing party says the opposition is seeking power through clearly unconstitutional means. Kosovo declared independence from Serbia in 2008, but Serbia has refused to recognize its secession. And the Japanese military displayed its prowess today during exercises in the waters of Sagami Bay. A total of 42 vessels and 38 aircraft participated in the event ahead of Sunday's Maritime Self-Defense Force Fleet Review. That will be attended by Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. The display, which also saw South Korean participation, aims to boost public support for Japan's increased role in defense operations abroad. Japan's parliament approved contentious legislation last month to loosen constraints on the country's military. Coming up later, Brian Bush has the latest news on that situation in the West Bank. But next, Building 429 joins us here in historical Studio B to perform Where I Belong. We're back with more after this. Got Facebook? Follow The Harvest Show. Comment and share your opinions on current events. Watch the most inspiring guest interviews right here. Watch my weekly video updates from Israel. Facebook.com slash The Harvest Show. Like us today.
the sick, mend broken relationships, reach the loss with the love of Christ. Do all of that and more when you support LaCie Broadcasting Prayer Line. Prayer Line is a channel of God's love, reaching more than 10,000 people every month. Your gift today will help keep Prayer Line available for free, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Go to your phones right now and call 1-800-365-3732. Give now and keep Prayer Line going strong. The Sea Tours comes to Israel three times a year, February, June, and November. And we want you to join us as we experience the land of the Bible and walk through the Bible where the Bible literally does come to life. We want to share with you more information at LaCTours.com about how you can come to the land of the Bible and experience the Bible for yourself. For a free November tour brochure, call 1-800-685-3732 or visit LaCTours.com. Dr. Lester Summerall said that faith comes not by prayer, but by continually feeding on God's Word. Paul the Apostle wrote that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. LaCie we'll Broadcasting's Partner in Faith make it possible for millions to hear the Word of God in over 190 countries, whether by television, shortwave radio, free Bible distribution, a 24-hour daily prayer line, souls hear the gospel. Will you join our fellowship of partners in faith? With every soul you reach for Jesus Christ, you're laying up treasure in heaven. We need your help to reach the lost for Jesus Christ. You can be a partner in faith for as little as a monthly gift of $25. Call 1-800-365-3732 and tell the prayer operator you want to be a partner in faith. Call today, 1-800-365-3732. Christian rock band Building 429 has been captivating audiences for years with electrifying music and performances. Today, a couple of the guys join us with a backstory on their new project, Unashamed. Welcome to The Harvest Show, or should I say welcome back to Lissy Broadcasting, yeah. Jason and Michael. You know, thank you so much for joining us. First of all, let's get that part out of the Yeah, way. we're glad to be here. Yeah, thanks, thanks so for much having for having us. Okay, I want you all to know, don't let this like polished look fool you. When you guys were here for World Pulse Festival, I was jumping all around, just <laughs> rocking with yeah. you guys. Awesome. This is not yeah. where I belong. Okay, I'll let you, you all do this You can take my job. You've already <laughs> got it. You here me? we go. You guys gave an awesome performance. I mean, I mean, what drives you? Well, I mean, obviously we want to communicate the gospel to mm -hmm. people um, in a way that they can maybe, they can understand it. I know for us, um, we've been blessed through the years to um, have a long-lasting career in, uh, in, in this kind of, in this music business, music ministry. And I think for, for Mike and I, I mean, we, 
we really do have a relationship behind mm -hmm. closed doors that really matters. You know, like we actually do love each other. We've been through some difficult things together, which puts us in a place where I think we have great genuine excitement. We can stand on the stage and say, look at what God's done in our lives and therefore look what he can do in your life as well. So we're, we consider it just a privilege and an honor to still be doing something 16 years after yeah. we started the band. 16 years? Yeah. Wow. Started in 1999. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I have to ask you, where, did, where does the name Building 429 come from? It comes from Ephesians 429 in the okay. Bible, which says, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth except mm -hmm. that which is helpful for building others up. So it's used as, as an encouragement to lift people up. Okay, so whenever we have music guests who stop by, they always go to Pulse FM and oh, joining yeah. me. Oh, so yeah. I asked Corey to join me on stage here. You know, guys, Corey, you know, Corey, Corey Mann, the director of Pulse FM. Have I, I love uh, <laughs> the industry because we've become friends. Yeah. Yeah. I can say that. And uh, something I recently found out about you, you and I have similar childhoods. Yeah. We both grew up with the sound of Sandy Patty. <laughs> yes, we did. Blaring in our household. That's right. My mom uh, fed me some Sandy Patty on a daily basis, <laughs> and I saw something recently that I was moved by it. And I, I would you share that story about yeah, you? Yeah, you know, um, my, my family, there was a divorce that happened when I was about five years old, and, and, um, and at five, my, my family really began to move across the country and separate out. And, mm -hmm. and I remember we had, we had one of those, um, those white station wagons, like back in the day where you could sit in the seat facing backwards, you know? I don't think the they way, would pass way code anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that's what we had. And I, I remember we were moving from my hometown to, uh, to Dallas, Texas, like after the divorce, you know, like leaving mm -hmm. my father. And my mom had one tape in the car that she would listen to, a tape, cassette tape. And it was just the Sandy Patty uh, tape and so she would listen to it over and over again to give her hope and and it was really this interesting thing where we ended up being on tour on the women of faith tour and there Sandy Patty is Aww. and and it's crazy but Sandy has become just such a good friend of us well here's the point last weekend we played in near Charlotte North Carolina in Charlotte North Carolina and my mom Sandy asked my mom to come on stage and sing with me and Sandy. It's the first time my mom's ever sang on stage with me ever. Wow. And we sang Amazing Grace. Oh. And it was, it just brought 30 years of, of, it just kind of brought this completion thing to mm -hmm. my life. Like, oh my gosh, I didn't understand why it hurt so bad back then. But now 30 years later, I get to stand on the stage and say, God, your amazing grace carried us through. And, uh, and it's just an amazing, we hope that our legacy is somehow mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. So I'd imagine that that's where those lyrics come from. I mean, because you all put out some amazing music, really resonates with people. I mean, what's it like to hear the audience sing your song back to you as you're singing? Well, that, I mean, that's no greater compliment in the world mm -hmm. than to know that people are worshiping, you know, the creator, um, you know, worshiping Jesus through our songs. I think the thing that I would say, too, is while we're here is that you, you honestly, these songs come from great hurt and great struggle. Wow. Um, and, Good point. and I think it's important to know that oftentimes we think our, our testimony is this just big old ugly black hole that we shouldn't really talk about. But, mm -hmm. but really when we start talking about it and we start sharing with people, this is where I'm from, this is what I've been through, uh, what you find is that your testimony is actually this huge blessing because it's this opportunity for you to relate to people because re people don't relate to perfection. They can't relate to perfection mm -hmm. because their lives aren't perfect, nobody's are. But when you start being really transparent and honest about your own struggles and how you've waited on God for so long, but then you, what you end up finding out is that oftentimes the mountain that's in your way is actually the doorway through which God will walk and show himself faithful. And that's really why I think our songs connect because there is a great difficulty from which uh, those songs were formed. If you follow these guys on social media, mm -hmm. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and just see if I can capture okay. who they are. Jason usually tweets or Instagrams okay. about the live show performance <laughs> or his family. Loves his family. That's it. Okay. Would, you, would you agree? There's no in between. How many kids? I have two kids. Okay. Married the drummer, yeah. if I had to guess, yeah, I loves <laughs> fishing. I yes. love fishing. I do love my wife too and my dog. Yes, you do. Yes. <laughs> Let's get that in there. For, but I do love fishing. That but, you, is my... but when Michael goes fishing, it's not a holding up a little string no, of, of a little guppy. Not. You're like, what do you call that type of fishing? It's like, that's big. It's deep sea. Yeah, like deep sea fishing for like king mackerel and mahi mahi and, and he that never stuff. every yeah. time he posts a picture it's like 15 massive fish and you're like <laughs> i've never had that experience in my life well, well it lets us know that you guys <laughs> are kind of like Carolina. really just down to earth and so now you have this new cd out tell us about unashamed yeah well i kind of talked a little bit about our stories and about the reality that mm -hmm. that you know that our stories is what gives us great um currency to use when we're sharing the gospel well in you know, the gospel we still believe firmly in the word of god and, um, and we just did this tour 
where we were having these late night theological conversations deep about like, well, this, is the word of God relevant anymore and all that mm -hmm. type of stuff. And, and, uh, and what we just kind of found was that, you know, we, we're unashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Why? Because it's the power of God for salvation for anyone who would believe. And what we also ran into is it's hard to be unashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ if you're not unashamed of your story and how the gospel has intersected Good your point. story. Mm -hmm. and, and, it's, and, it, and you can see then that this whole brokenness story is actually for the glory of God. And that gives you the power to say, I'm unashamed of the gospel. So we made this record with this whole idea, you know, for such a time as this, now it's time for us to, to actually be Bible-believing Christians. Mm -hmm. um, because I think one of the interesting things is, is that the Word of God does not return void. Um, and the Word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. It cuts right through all the mess. And what's interesting is in our shows, the most powerful moments of the show, people are like, oh my gosh, you're so eloquent. You just said such powerful. Yeah, I was just reading out a psalm. You know, just, <laughs> just reading out of the book. You know, the, mm -hmm. that's what the book says, you know. And, and I think that um, for us, we just wanted to make a record that would hopefully inspire people to stand up and say, you know what, I've been broken, therefore I can say I'm unashamed of the gospel because it gave me hope. Mm -hmm. What about, what's your story, Michael? I mean, when you, when you think about the music that you're putting out mm -hmm. and how it's changing lives, do you get the response from people who run up to you who not only want your autograph or want to go fishing with you, what are they <laughs> saying? <laughs> no, absolutely. Like, I mean, Christian music in general, you know, has changed my life um, growing up. Where I used to live, we didn't even had have Christian music. My mm -hmm. first concert was a um, Stephen Kerr Chapman Third Day concert. So that's that was a my great first... way to start. Yeah, yeah it was a great right? way to start. <laughs> and uh, so that's that's kind of was my introduction to Christian music. And uh, as soon as I saw that concert, I knew that this was what I was called to do. You know, because I was a German before before that. Mm -hmm. And I said, I want to do Christian music, and one day I'm going to be doing that. So. I loved uh, watching you guys. You played our festival twice. Yeah. And one of my favorite moments of being in this industry is you pulling me aside after the first year going, we'll come back. Yeah. yeah. We'll come back. And I thought you were kidding until you, you came back, <laughs> uh, which I appreciate. We were serious. Man, that festival, the, awesome. the World Pulse Festival is just a highlight of the year um, for us. It was a highlight two years ago, and then it was again this year as well. I mean, we love playing that festival because there's such a sweet spirit there. You know it really I mean? is. Yeah. Unbelievable. So uh, you guys are, you know, you got day-to-day -day busyness, but I, I know you're already thinking about 2016. Is there anything up your sleeve you're working on, you're excited about? You're probably doing a lot of touring Man, with the new album. We, but, have, uh, we have some unbelievable, like God has just blessed us with just a bunch of doors that are starting to fly open. Mm -hmm. um, and some that we really can't discuss at the moment, but there will be some, 2016 is gonna be a, a banner year for building 429 and for what God's done through us. We're so excited about it. He's given us great influence. Uh, the Unashamed, Unashamed campaign, if you will, um, it's been crazy because we started it, uh, I guess with the release of a record two weeks ago, I posted a thing about being unashamed and two million people saw it and gravitated to it. Wow. It. And so, so we're actually, we're, we're gonna be working on, I'm just gonna say it, we're gonna be working on a movie. Yay, yes. good, um, good. We're going to be working on, um, we're going to be doing a me mega tour with a guy named Toby Mack. Um, <laughs> then we're going to be headlining a tour behind that. And, uh, and so just nonstop, uh, it, we're just so excited for the next year. Well, thank you guys so much. Jason Roy, Michael Anderson, thanks for joining us here on Harvest to Connect with the band. Go to building429.com where you know the drill. Go to harvest-tv.com. Still to come, Pastor Mark Lance joins us with the conclusion of today's teaching. But up next, Brian Bush with an update live from the Middle East. Friends like you have helped send over 700,000 Bibles around the world through our Spread the Word ministry. We're so thankful for your support to help us take the best news of all time to more of those hungry to hear it. Through your generosity, many thousands have already read about the saving grace of Jesus Christ. And with your support, we look forward to helping fulfill Dr. Lester Sumrall's vision of reaching the untold billions yet untold with the gospel. Do you sometimes wonder what life would be like if you had the energy to do those extra
extra things you want to do but just can't? Maybe it's to go for a walk after dinner or spend your Saturdays playing with your kids. If you're tired all the time and have decided that you just always will be, guess what? You don't have to be. With Mineral Concentrate from Making Healthy Choices, this fulvic acid electrolyte mineral formula promotes maximum cell function while sparking your body's electrical conductivity. What does that mean? Well, most people say they've never felt better. The best part is it's only $29.95. And if you call now, we'll even pay to ship it to you. So dial 1-800-965-2345 or go to mhclife.com. This electrolyte formula promotes dependable, solid energy day in and day out. So call the number on the screen. Do it for your spouse, your kids, your friends, and most of all, do it for you. Call 1-800-965-2345 or go to mhclife.com. It's time for life. Dr. Lester Sumrall was given a global vision to reach a million souls every day for Jesus Christ. To fulfill his God-given assignment, he began establishing the many outreaches of Lassie Broadcasting. Today, the ministry reaches millions of people in more than 190 nations through the power of television, radio, free Bibles, shortwave satellite, and prayer line. But we need your help to reach millions more. Will you join Partners in Faith and help us spread the gospel around the world? Will you commit to giving a monthly gift of $25, $50, $100 or more. Dr. Sumrall knew he couldn't fulfill his vision without the help of thousands of partners. But don't wait. Become a partner in faith today. Call 1-800-365-3732 or visit lacy.com to give safe and secure online. The Bible says he who wins souls is wise. Make the wise choice today to become a partner in faith and help us win souls for Jesus. We've been keeping you up to date on those simmering tensions going on in Israel. The reason we've been able to do that is our Lassie correspondent, Brian Bush, and he joins us once again from Jerusalem. Brian, we sure appreciate you being on, there on the ground for us, uh, really in the center of it all. Tell us what the situation is like in Israel today. Well, as you know, Chuck, Israel has deployed troops throughout the country now in areas where Palestinians and Israelis intersect. Nowhere is that more prevalent than here in Jerusalem, where what some people describe as East Jerusalem or Arab Jerusalem or Occupied Jerusalem, it is occupied in full now with soldiers manning checkpoints and also walking on the streets at all major arteries into predominantly Jewish areas of Jerusalem, Palestinian workers that usually work in West Jerusalem, uh, are not doing so. They're staying in their homes. That's, of course, has an economic effect, but it also has affected the violence, it appears. Chuck? Well, this is the second day of this Israeli action. And as you mentioned, an effect on the violence because the situation does seem to be better in terms of general unrest, isn't it? Yes, well, carrying on with what I was saying, um, the, the limiting of Palestinian movement, um, I can tell you that one sees it on the street. It seems to have slowed uh, not just the tempo of the unrest, but also uh, the general state of Jerusalem. Uh, today, there has been uh, uh, one potentially terror-related incident in Tel Aviv, and then there was a second incident where elsewhere a soldier fired his weapon at an individual that he thought had a knife. Um, but uh, after Tuesday's very difficult day, it appears to have been uh, the spike in this violent cycle that we've seen. Um, at this point, things do appear calmer, and we're thankful for that. Continue to pray for this situation. Chuck? Now, the Israeli government has introduced some tough new measures meant to, well, really discourage this kind of attack. Tell us what those are. Well, first of all, a terrorist will have his home destroyed and it will be illegal for him to rebuild uh, there and the property is subject to being confiscated. Secondly, the terrorist, uh, if he or she is an Israeli resident, will have their rights revoked in what uh, uh, seems to be 
uh, this removal of the right to work, uh, the right to health care, the right to pension, essentially operate in any normal sense in society under Israeli control. Now, the one measure that has many people worried and is different from in the past is that the Israeli government may be setting up this confiscation of property issue in order to plant settlers on the property of terrorists. And this is seen as an extremely volatile thing to do. Chuck? There has been a lot of reporting here in the West that the unrest came about due to disturbances at the Temple Mount, but it would seem there's got to be much more to it, and you say there is, Brian. Yes, um, sure there is, because in situations like this, um, there is underlying tension, unresolved injustices, and uh, such the like. But the mother vein, if you will, to the unrest ultimately is the peace process. It starts, it stops. This is a destructive cycle. And whichever side one is on, this uncertainty drives radicalism on both sides and ultimately is destructive to both societies. Now, yes, the threat to the status quo at Islam's third holiest site, the Haram al-Sharif, set off this latest round of violence. But there is a general sense of hopelessness on both sides, particularly, though, with the Palestinians. As you know, I've been here, Chuck, well over 20 years, and my observation is that a generation is growing up under all this uncertainty, and that each side is drifting further from the other, doesn't want to seem to understand the other side doesn't want to talk to the other side, and that resistance to talking continues to grow, which only fuels isolation and extremism. Chuck? All right, Brian, thank you very much. We'll talk to you tomorrow. That's Brian Bush reporting from Jerusalem. And a reminder that Brian also gives us exclusive content from Israel, only available on the Harvest Show Facebook page. So make sure you like us on Facebook. Still to come, Pastor Mark Lance will have part one of Desire, the stage manager of life. But coming up next, here's Building 429 performing Ocean Deep. Would you look at me Here in my frailty I've been living a lie Believing that I could earn this And would you look at us We say we know your love But still we think if we fail Somehow you won't be enough yeah, but your mercy is an ocean deep. Your grace is washing over me. Your love is like a wildfire chasing after me. Your mercy is an ocean deep. Your grace is washing over me. Your love. More than I deserve Before I said a word yeah, You know all of my fears Every tear I will ever cry And you keep reaching out Far beyond my doubts When I see all that you've done I'm overcome I'm swept away Cause your mercy is an ocean deep Your grace is washing over me Your love is like a wildfire Chasing after me Your mercy is an ocean deep Your grace is washing over me Your love is
I surrender all I am to you. It's all, it's all that I can do. It's all, it's all that I can do. I surrender all I am to you. It's all. Your grace is washing over me. Your love is like a wildfire chasing after me. Your mercy is washing me. Your grace is washing over me. Your love is like a wildfire chasing after me. Your mercy. You know, there are so few things in this world that you can count on anymore, especially when it comes to our financial future and planning for retirement. We live in a dynamic world defined by change, but when it comes to securing our retirement income, we want stability, not uncertainty. And that's why I consistently talk about charitable gift annuities. A gift annuity provides a safe and steady income stream which is fixed for life, and you are investing into changing lives for Jesus Christ at the same time. If you are over 49 and a half years of age and you have at least $10,000 in a savings account or CD, call us today. Let us show you how you can have at least one form of retirement income that you can count on. When you lay up your treasure in heaven, you can count on it being there waiting for you. So call us today and let us help you have a secure income for the rest of your life. to talk to you for the next two days on this subject, the stage manager of your future. You know, William Shakespeare's As You Like It, the melancholy Jacques makes this statement, quote, all the world's a stage. The monologue in which the statement is made compares the world to a stage and your life to a play. It creates this picture that every person is simply an actor on a stage that's already been set surrounded by characters already chosen to be in your life along with the props that are already in place. It gives us this false image that there's very little that we can do to change the setting of our life or even more importantly, the curtain call of our life. Now, friend, I totally disagree with this image created by Shakespeare's famous words. I know the stage of your life may have been set by the moment of your entrance with the props, the characters of your life having already been chosen, but you still have the power to rewrite the script. The script that has been handed to you can be torn up and completely rewritten. I know you might think this is impossible, but I want to tell you, God has given you the creative power to envision yourself in a different role than the script you presently hold. But there's one word that makes all of that possible. The word is desire. Without desire, you're going to continue to live every day the way that you've always lived. You're going to continue to be this character on a predestined stage, merely acting out a role that was written by someone else and then handed to you to act out. But today, something's about to change. The Holy Spirit is going to awaken an intense desire within you. And now, so here's a couple of thoughts that I want to motivate you with how you can rewrite your script through desire. First of all, define your desire. I believe that your desires have been given to you from the moment you were born. Look what the scripture says in Psalm 37 and verse 4. The Bible said, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Simply put, the desires you presently have in your heart have been specifically placed there by an all-loving, all-knowing God. I understand people can get off track. They can begin to desire the wrong things in life. 
But I don't believe you're one of those people. The very fact you're investing time to watch The Harvest Show reveals you are different. You sincerely want to follow those God-given desires that are deep within you. So the starting point is to ask questions like this. In the quiet moments of my life, where do I find my heart leading me? What do I dream about? What do I think about? What is it that I naturally desire? What has God gifted me with? Where do my natural talents lie? You see, friend, you're watching, and your desires have lay quietly buried by the experiences of life. They're hidden among the junk of broken relationships and dreams, but they're still there because God has given them to you. What God has given, He will not take away. You've been carefully crafted. You've been carefully created around your desires. Your personality, your gifts, your abilities have all been shaped around the desires that God has planted within you. So how do you awaken these desires? How do you bring back the intensity that you need to make them a reality? That's the second thing. Picture your desires. Everything begins with a thought. Your mind is the most amazing creator in the world. Nobody else can create your world for you. I talk to people all the time. They're living in a world that are created by their past experiences. They live in a world that are created by the hurt, the pain that's been inflicted on them through the years of their life. But here's the good news. You don't have to live in that world. You can create a new world in which you live because you are created in the image of God. You have the ability to see and vision a life that is different than what it is right now. You have that God-given capacity to see things that don't get Yet exist as though they already did. That's what faith is all about. Look in Romans chapter 4 and verse 17. The Bible said, God who quickens the dead and calls those things which be not as though they were. So today, start picturing those desires that lay buried in your soul. Create a vision so clearly that you can see them come to pass in reality. I'm excited about this day for you. I want you to join me tomorrow because we're going to conclude this conversation about desire being the stage manager of of your future. Today's a new day for you. Start to see things differently. Start to awaken those God-given desires within. Live it out and you'll live a greater future. For 70 years, we've been using shortwave radio to reach many in developing countries with the gospel. We're so thankful for your support, which has helped continue the work Dr. Lester Summerall began. And through your gifts and prayers, we are excited to continue transmitting God's Word by shortwave radio to every major continent in the world, sharing the good news of Jesus with those who simply can't be reached any other way. If you are among the thousands who love the teaching of Lester Sumrall, then you should have the two-volume set of The Treasury of Lester Sumrall. Written in Dr. Sumrall's easy-to-understand style, you'll feel like you are getting a Bible school education. There are 732 individual readings, one for each day for two whole years. These beautiful devotionals will also make a wonderful gift for your friends, family, or even your pastor. Order yours today. Dr. Lester Sumrall was given a global vision to reach a million souls every day for Jesus Christ. To fulfill his God-given assignment, he began establishing the many outreaches of Lassie Broadcasting. Today, the ministry reaches millions of people in more than 190 nations through the power of television, radio, free Bibles, shortwave satellite, and prayer line. But we need your help to reach millions more. Will you join Partners in Faith and help us spread the gospel around the world? Will you commit to giving a monthly gift of $25, $50, $100 or more. Dr. Sumrall knew he couldn't fulfill his vision without the help of thousands of partners. But don't wait. Become a partner in faith today. Call 1-800-365-3732 or visit lacy.com to give safe and secure online. The Bible says he who wins souls is wise. Make the wise choice today to become a partner in faith and help us win souls for Jesus. 
love what Scripture says is given by inspiration of God is a real treasure, and that's why we want to invite you to sign up for the treasury of Dr. Lester Sumrall. This free daily e-devotional draws from Dr. Sumrall's timeless writings and biblical insight on many issues confronting us today. Just go to lacy.com and click on the treasury sign-up banner to receive the treasury of Dr. Lester Sumrall in your inbox every day. That's L-E-S-E-A dot com. All right, one thing we want to get to today is a man on the street that you did, Valerie, recently uh, here in the South Bend area with the Democrat debate coming up this, this week and uh, all the folks on Hillary Clinton. Yeah, we wanted to know what everyday voters, uh, you know, what they think of Hillary Clinton. So here's what they had to say. We'll discuss their comments in just a moment. Take a listen. I have very deep reservations about her. Remembering Benghazi, she could have prevented that terrible thing that happened to our country's ambassadors and people that represented our country. Um, I, I have severe, um, I, I'm not so sure she's being honest with this up front. She is marching to her own drum. I do not feel comfortable about voting for her and I will not vote for her. I distrust Hillary very much so. She's a professional politician. Uh, she will go with the wind, whatever it needs to uh, support her uh, campaign or her political ambitions. I think that's more in her interest than actually coming out, speaking the truth, uh, devil take the hindmost as to uh, what are the consequences of speaking truly what your conscience tells you. Wow, uh, I didn't expect people to be so reserved and reticent. I thought they'd really mm -hmm. share what they felt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, Stefan, and I want you to know I did not go out looking for people. I wanted pros and cons. You weren't like, looking at car right, bumper stickers before right, you asked them questions. That's right. I just went out and just talked to everyday people, and this is what you know I, I was dealt. So it's interesting to wow. find out, but it's a long stretch, and you know what? It's something that we can pray about, and someone is standing by right now, Stefan, in prayer line. Yeah, Pastor Charles, <laughs> uh, I don't forget to listen in on in the prayer line there, but uh, with uh, you know all these political things, I know it's something that we want to keep in our prayers and encourage our viewers to do the same regarding the leadership of our nation. The scriptures command us to pray for those that are in charge over us. They are God's appointed people to carry out and administer and execute judgment and justice. Uh, so that's one thing, but I know that you've got some uh, prayer requests as well today. Yeah, yeah, I got prayer requests and I got ooh gods of comments on what we just talked about, <laughs> that's for sure, but I'll deal with the prayer requests and we'll talk about that at another time. <laughs> But at any rate, though, uh, we do have uh, praise reports today, actually. Uh, some of those prayer requests have been coming in. Some of them have gotten answered, and the callers actually called us back and reported that information to us. For instance, Greta over uh, up in Canada, Greta says, I lost my keys and cannot find them. I got so desperate that I called you all. She says, <laughs> when the prayer partner said, amen, I heard the Holy Spirit say, check the bathroom doorknob. She says, glory to God, there they were. <laughs> and then, then Greg in uh, Louisiana, Greg says, I have called prayer line a few times over the months and was told to give God time to move on my wife who has been gone for over a year. Mm -hmm. Thanks for the prayer and thank God himself as she has returned after 15 months. Wow. And then we have Randy down in Indianapolis. Randy says in Indiana, uh, Randy says, I am thanking God and prayer line for restoring my daughter and my relationship. You all prayed in agreement with me that uh, God come through uh, again. Also, my job has released my unemployment benefits and I have received all the back pay. And then finally, Jackson uh, over in Virginia, Jackson says, my mother had stage four cancer and you all prayed with me a year ago and I called you today to let you know that she is yet cancer free. Hmm. Thank God and thank you all at Prayer Line. Wow, wow, yeah. powerful stuff, uh, Pastor yeah. Charles. And uh, you know, whether it's the little things in life or the yeah. biggest That's things right. in life, 
we can always go to the Lord in prayer with that. And if you would just uh, lead us in prayer today for friends watching that have needs in their, their homes, uh, needs in, in their hearts, needs in, in their lives, uh, let's lift them up to the Lord. Sure, Father in heaven, we just thank you right now, Lord God, for those ones that you are indeed answering their prayers. Father, you, you're healing bodies, Lord God, you're delivering the souls. And Father, you're bringing salvation to their homes. And we're just asking you, Lord God, to continue doing what you do best, Lord, as we continue to serve and praise and honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Any time of the day or night, you can connect with our Prayer Line Center by phone, by email, by uh, snail mail. And there's even a website that we talk about from time to time. It's called worldharvest.com. You can go there, log in your prayer request, see some other prayer requests, and take a moment to pray for someone else as well. But we'd love to hear from you right now. Toll free number 1-800-365-3732 or email prayer at lessee.com. We'll see you tomorrow on The Harvest Show. Help heal the sick, mend broken relationships, Reach the loss with the love of Jesus Christ. Do all that and more when you support LaCie Broadcasting's Prayer Line. Since it was founded by Dr. Lester Summerall in 1970, Prayer Line has been a channel of God's love and source of miracles reaching more than 10,000 people each month. Every single day, our dedicated staff and volunteers receive hundreds of phone calls and emails from people around the world who desperately need a touch from God. Some are struggling with drug addiction. Others have lost their jobs or received frightening medical news. In every situation, they find the comfort and support they need thanks to your generous support. Please don't let this critical lifeline of hope and comfort go silent. Your gift today will help make sure that Prayer Line is always available for free, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Give online today at lissy.com. That's lissy.com. If you love God, but your faith needs refueling, be refreshed with The Harvest Show. Harvest is real and relevant with God-loving people ready to help reignite your faith with prayer, inspiring guest interviews, and great conversation about the goodness of God. Build up your spirit and your mind with international news from a Christian perspective and live reports from Israel. The Harvest Show is hosted by a team of Christians who love God and work hard to extend His love to you. When your faith needs to be renewed, watch The Harvest Show live Monday through Friday on the LaCie Broadcasting Network. Yeah.